I'm Taiho Yamada from Mock, and in this video I'm going to show you how to navigate and edit WaveRazor patches within our contextual editing system. In the upper left section, you'll find the patch browser, Save, Settings, Help, Panic, and New Buttons for Undo, Edit History, and Redo. In the upper right, you'll find the meters for CPU and voice count, as well as the oscilloscope. You navigate through the editor by clicking on the blocks in the upper center. If you've ever seen a block diagram of a synthesizer voice, this should look pretty familiar to you. You'll see oscillators mixing into filters and an amp section, which then feeds an effects section before heading to the output. On the far left of this navigation area, you'll find the controllers from the main page, modulation sources, which include LFOs and envelopes, except for the hardwired amplitude envelopes that appear in the amp section, and last but not least, the modulation matrix, which can connect up to 128 modulators to almost any parameter in the synth. Now when you click on a navigation block, like oscillator 1, the synth brings that module into focus in the lower center section of the display. Not only does it bring the module into focus for editing, but it also displays, in context, any modules that are connected to it. On the left, you'll find the input column, which in this case shows some LFOs, including the vibrato LFO routed to the oscillator. Within this header at the top of the column are tabs that help sort through the connections. These tabs allow you to also see the controllers routed to the oscillator, the audio input, which can be routed through the oscillator for slicing, and the matrix routings targeting the oscillator. On the right side, you'll see the output column, which shows where the focus module's output is going. In this case, we see the oscillator mixer and how the source oscillator feeds the filter section. We can also use the tab to see the filters themselves. Within the input and output columns, the modules are displayed in a condensed form, with only the most important parameters shown for convenient tweaking alongside the module in focus. However, if you need to edit any of these modules more extensively, you can click directly on their focus button in order to bring the desired module into the center. In fact, this is the second method for navigating through the synth. Clicking on successive focus buttons can move you left and right through the voice path. Some modules also provide a mute button, which allows you to either turn off or bypass the module. This is useful for when you want to figure out what the module is doing within your sound. It's possible to mute oscillators, LFOs, envelopes, and mod routes, while filters and effects can be bypassed. And finally, some modules have drop-down menu buttons that provide additional functionality specific to the module. With modulation sources, you get the option to delete the module or rename it. For instance, you can name your LFO vibrato LFO, so you can find the right LFO again later. This name will also show up in the modulation matrix and help you locate the right modulation path. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and learning about WaveRazor's innovative contextual editing system. For more information, please check out the Traction and Mock websites.